This lecture is on Hamilton paths and Hamilton circuits. It corresponds to section 14.3 in Math in Our World by Sebecki. A path that passes through each vertex of a gra graph exactly once is called a Hamilton path. Once again, a path that passes through each vertex of a graph exactly once is called a Hamilton path. Recall that a Euler path is a path that passes through each edge exactly once. But a Hamilton path is a path that passes through each vertex exactly once. If a Hamilton path begins and ends at the same vertex and passes through all other vertices exactly once, it is a Hamilton circuit. Example 1. Examples of Hamilton paths and Hamilton circuits. Find a Hamilton path for the graph to the right. Part A. Part B. Find a Hamilton circuit for the graph. So first we're just looking for a Hamilton path. So a Hamilton path uh, does not have to start and end at the same place. A Hamilton path must pass through each vertex exactly once. Not through each edge exactly once, but through each vertex exactly once. The graph has many Hamilton paths. An example of such a path is A to B. We go from A to B and then B to C, B to C, C to D, C to D, and then D to E. If you have no if you, if you will notice we have gone through each and every vertex. You have five vertices, one, two, three, four, five, and we have gone through all five of those vertices. We, we started, started with uh, point A. So that was our initial point. So we, we uh, record that as having gone through point A. And then we went to point B, uh, vertex B. So we went uh, through vertex B, we went through vertex, vertex C next, we went through vertex uh, D next, and then finally to vertex E. So we went through each and every one of these uh, vertices. Uh, so this would represent our path. We can use commas. Uh, we can uh, put A comma B comma C comma D comma E. That means that we went from A to B, then B to C, then C to D, and then D to E. And that represents a Hamilton path because uh, we didn't end up at the point that we started with or the vertex that we started with. We started with uh, vertex A. But we didn't end up at vertex A. We ended up at vertex E, as you can see by our uh, notation here. Now, to get a Hamilton circuit, a Hamilton circuit must pass through each vertex exactly once and begin and end at the same vertex. The graph has many Hamilton circuits. An example of such a circuit is 
A to B, B to C, A to B, we start out the same way we did before, B to C, we did that before, C to D, C to D, we did that before, D to E, D to E, and then back to A. So we went through each and every vertex and we ended up where we started. We started at point A, we ended up at point A. We didn't go through any uh, vertex twice. You can't go through any vertex twice. You, you recall when we did the um, Euler uh, path and the Euler circuit, uh, we couldn't go through any edge twice. So now we can't go through any uh, vertex twice. And we have to end up where we started when we, when we look for <coughs> an Euler uh, Hamilton circuit. The next thing we need to discuss is what we mean by a complete graph. A complete graph is a graph that has an edge between each pair of its vertices. A complete graph is a graph that has an edge between each pair of its vertices. This graph on the left is not a complete graph. We don't have an edge between A and D, and we don't have an edge between uh, B and C. For a complete graph, you have to have an edge between all your vertices. We got an edge between uh, D and C. We got an edge between A and D. We got an edge between uh, D and B. I mean D and E, and. Uh, an uh, edge between E and B. We got an edge between uh, A and E and an edge between E and C, but we don't have an edge between uh, A and D and uh, B and C. In order for this to be a complete graph, we would have to put in those edges. So we have done that on the right. As you can see, now we have an edge between uh, each pair of uh, vertices each and every pair of vertices we have an edge between them so this gives us what we call a complete graph the number of Hamilton circuits in a complete graph that's what we're talking about now we're, we're talking about having a complete graph having an edge between each and every pair of vertices and we want to know how many Hamilton circuits we, will we have uh, in different situations uh, if we have a complete graph. So that's what we're talking about here. And uh, we, we have found that the number of Hamilton circuits in a complete graph with n vertices is n minus 1 factorial. Uh, for example, if we have a graph with four vertices, well, let's say um, a graph with uh, five vertices. If we have a graph with five vertices, the number of Hamilton circuits would be five minus one factorial. Five minus one is four. Four factorial means four times three times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that will give us uh, 24. So there would be 24 of those Hamilton uh, circuits in a complete graph with uh, 5 vertices. So this formula can be helpful in finding out how many uh, Hamilton circuits uh, you would have in a complete graph. Of course, to find those Hamilton circuits, uh, you still have to use trial and error. 
you still have to try this, try that, and hopefully you'll you'll come up with what works. In the graph, there are edges between each pair of vertices. Thus, the graph is complete and has a Hamilton circuit. One circuit is A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A. Any circuits that pass through the same vertices in the same order will be considered to be the same. For example, A, B, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A, and B to C, C to D, D to A, and A to B, and C to D, D to A, A to B, B to C, and also D to A, A to B, B to C, C to D. In order to avoid duplication in forming a Hamilton circuit, we can always assume that it begins at A. There are six different or unique Hamilton circuits for the graph because n minus 1 factorial equals 4 minus 1 factorial equals 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 times 1 which equals 6. They are given as A to B, B to C, D to A, A to B, D to C, C to A, so these two have just been switched around here as you can see, uh, A to C, B, C to, A to C, C to B, B to D, D to A, and then we just switch these two around, A to C, C to D, D to B, B to A, and then we have A to D, D to B, B to C, C to A, and then we switch these two around once again, we get A to D, D to C, C to B, and then B to A. So there we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six uh, Hamilton circuits. Weighted graphs. Weighted graphs are graphs wherein you have weights on the different edges. And many times uh, you have to add these weights together. When you have a certain path or a certain circuit, you have to add these weights together uh, to get the total. Uh, for example, each edge might represent a cost uh, for doing something. And then you just uh, add the different costs together to get the total cost. A complete graph whose edges have numbers attached to them is called a weighted graph. The number shown along the edges, if a weighted graph or call the, along the edges in that should be in a weighted graph, or call the weights of the edges. Here's an example of a weighted graph. This edge here is weighted with 190. This edge here across here is weighted 155. This edge is weighted uh, 124. This edge here is weighted 126. This one is 179. And this edge here is weighted 157. The graph below is a model graph for one-way airfares from cities A, B, C, and D. So you have four cities. A, B, C, and D. And these are the 
one-way airfares for the cities. Use the weighted graph to find the cost of the trip for the Hamilton circuit. So this is the Hamilton circuit. The Hamilton circuit is A to B, A to B, B to D, B to D, which goes across here, which is 190 plus 155, uh, D to C, D to C, 179, and C to A, uh, C to A, 124. Uh, so that's what you have there. The trip described by the Hamilton Circuit A, B to D, D to C, C to A, involves, I'm sorry, uh, the trip described by the Hamilton Circuit A to B, B to D, D to C, C to A, because you have to end up where you started involves the sum of full costs. Uh, A to B is 190. Uh, B to D is uh, 155. Uh, D to C. Uh, D to C is 179. We have that here. Uh, C to A. C to A is 124. We have that there. So the cost would be six hundred forty-eight dollars. That would be the cost that we would have uh, for that Hamilton uh, circuit: A to B, B to D, D to C, C to A. So you would have some problems similar to this uh, for homework. Now, let's look at the brute force method. The brute force method is a method for, term, for determining the optimal solution. In our cases, the optimum solution will be the minimum solution. In some cases, uh, it might be the maximum, but we are talking about the minimum solution. Uh, it might be a cost problem. And you might want to minimize costs. So that's what we're dealing with in this case. Uh, for the brute force method, you have to do all the possibilities. You have to write down all the possibilities. And then you have to add the numbers together, the weights together for all the different possibilities. And then you pick the possibility that would give you the minimum amount of whatever you're talking about. If you're talking about money or cost, it would be the one that would give you the minimum amount of cost. As indicated here, uh, the traveling salesman problem. The traveling salesman problem is the problem of finding a Hamilton circuit uh, in a complete weighted graph for which the sum of the weights of the edges is a minimum. Such a Hamilton circuit is called the optimal Hamilton circuit or the optimal solution. So that's what we're looking for. The optimal solution, which is the minimum solution. Our method of finding an optimal Hamilton circuit is called the brute force method. The optimal solution is found using the following steps. Step number one, model the problem with a complete weighted graph. Step number two, make a list of all the possible Hamilton circuits. And you can do that similar to the way that we just finished uh, doing all those six possibilities. Uh, next step, step three, determine the sum of the weights of the edges for each of these Hamilton uh, possible circuits. And then last but not least, the Hamilton circuit with the minimum sum of weights is the optimal solution. Example, using the brute force method, use the previous weighted graph to find the optimal solution. So once again, we figure out the total number of possibilities. 
uh, because we have one, two, three, four uh, vertices, the total number of possibilities for Hamilton circuits would be four minus one factorial. Four minus one factorial is three factorial. Three factorial is three times two times one, which gives us six possibilities. And then we just write down the six possibilities. Uh, A to B, uh, B to C, C to D, D to A. A to B, B to D, D to C, C to A. A to C, C to B, B to D, D to A. A to C, C to D, D to B, B to A. A to D, D to B, B to C, C to A. A to D, uh, D to C, C to B, B to A. So those are the possibilities. And then we add the weights on the edges. When we go from A to B, uh, from A to B we have 190. That's what we have there. Plus B to C. B to C is 126. That's the next number we have here, 126. Plus C to D. C to D is 179. That's the next number we have here. And then plus D to A. Because this is a circuit, we have to end up where we started. Uh, which we go from D to A. D to A is 157. We add these numbers together, we get 652. Likewise, we do the other circuits. So we have the first circuit we have is uh, 652. The next one is 648 total. The next one is 562. The next one is 648. The next one is 562. And the last one is 652. So I think you can see that uh, 562 is the minimum. And we have two of those. So these two uh, would be our solutions. Uh, those two uh, circuits. If we uh, uh, use those two circuits, uh, we would get the minimum uh, am amount, which is 562. So once again, uh, this is the brute force method. You just write down all the possibilities, add all the edges together, and pick the one that's the minimum. And this uh, pretty much uh, concludes our discussion on uh, Hamilton paths and Hamilton circuits. So once again, be sure to notice that when you're dealing with Hamilton uh, paths and circuits, you're going through the vertices. Uh, you want to go through each vertice, each vertex, uh, without each and every vertex, without uh, going through any of them more than once. Uh, and uh, when you're talking about a path, you don't have to start and end up at the same place. If you're talking about a circuit, you have to start at the same place that you end up. Uh, the same thing with the uh, Euler uh, path and the Euler circuit, but with the Euler path and the Euler circuit, you're going through the edges. You're not, you're not going through the vertices per se. That, that's not your main concern. In the Euler uh, paths and the Euler circuits, you're concerned with going through the edges without uh, retracing your steps or without you, you're concerned about going through each edge and every edge exactly once that's what you're concerned about uh, so your path you can you don't have to start it in that same place but for the order circuit you have to start it in in the same place uh, the homework for this section uh, at the end of section uh, 14.3, uh, you want to do these problems. You want to do problems 1 through 10, all. Those are conceptual problems. You want to do problems 12, 13, 19, 23, 29, 
and 35. Those are the exercises that you have to do on Hamilton paths and circuits. Have a great day. Bye now.